Now when we when I was trying to fit the two halves together, then I think to say that the fit's a bit ropey would be a bit of an understatement. Um, then they're, they're mismatched in that whether it's warped or it's just been a mismold, but you can see there that this side here is not as deep as this side here. So um, I think what we'll do to help even up the two sides when we come to put it together is we'll actually put the bulkheads into this side of the fuselage first, so this is the left side of the fuselage. And we'll get these glued in first. Probably a combination of um, Ravel Contactor, Mr. Tamiya, uh, Tamiya Extra Thin, and some super glue just to hold it in place whilst the hot plastic glues go off. Um, one thing to do, if I can find the sand and stick that will do the biz. There we go. One thing to do is we'll just take and run a sand and stick over the joints to clean off the paint just to give it a best chance of a plastic to plastic surface. Being careful not to sand any areas that we uh, want to retain. You could also scrape this with a, a knife blade. But sanding is sufficient just to <laughs> blow off. <laughs> there we go. So we've got that plastic edge exposed. It's not so easy to get it sanded in there. So we're just going to rely on one and, and burn it through the paint. Now if you remember, we didn't actually put a huge amount of paint down. So it's not going to take an awful lot to... Um, melt through the paint and get a plastic to plastic bond especially if we're going to use a little bit of Ravel contactor backed up with time you're extra thin so blown away the dust same with this side here So a few swipes for the sand and stick and that has got that sorted. Now I'll just grab my contactor. Hopefully the uh, pin tube is clear. Yeah, it appears to be. So let's get this in first to start dissolving the paints that we've put in here. And we want to just run that in right at the, basically the flange that's gonna sit at the rear of this bulkhead. A decent amount don't be overly because you don't want the glue splurging everywhere if you have put too much glue down I probably have here put a little bit excess glue what you can do is come in with a tammy or extra thin brush and wick away all the glue on the pot and then go in there and just use that to spread the glue on the joint but it'll also lift some of that glue out of there and save you from making an absolute mess of it. So, popping this part in, we want to pop it in ahead of the glue so there's a little bit of a gap and then push it back into the glue and into the former. And we want to make sure that what we want to make sure is that it butts up nicely right the way around. And then we need to push in so we're widening out the bottom gap to even up the airframes or the fuselage pieces. Um, I have a little tool here, a little mixing tool. It's got a nice kind of rubberized end on it so it doesn't damage anything. We can slide that in the back here 
just to push gently that bulkhead into that flanged area. All right, now keeping pressure on with this thumb, pushing it in the way. Go in with the time you're extra thin. That will help dissolve any paint in the joint and will help set the joint up. And don't be frightened to put plenty in. Okay. And then what we need to do, just blow gently to help um, help the Tamiya extra thin evaporate. So I'm going to get my tube of super glue. This is where you need to be careful because you don't want to go overboard with this. And then on the rear of the bulkhead, I'm going to come in here with the super glue. number of places I just set that glue in there to help stitch that panel in um, to get the glue to set off a bit quicker a little bit of accelerator right and then push and hold really important to keep the pressure on that joint at the moment Manipulate the model around so you'll let the accelerator run around. Um, the can do is bring a bit of kitchen towel in here just to help wick away the excess accelerator. And you can see straight away that, yeah, it's gone for the paint a little bit. We can touch that up, that's not a problem. But it is setting up the super glue, which is the main thing. That's going to help hold this panel in place. And one thing we can't do is join the fuselage halves together until the super glue is completely cured. And that's purely because we don't want fogging on any of these um, clear pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to join the front cockpit section into the fuselage half the same as I've done this. Um, I'll get the super glue dried off and then we'll probably come back in here just gently and um, blow in a little bit of um, green paint just to hide any glue marks and that from um, when you look through the side fuselage windows. Not that you're going to see much, but it's best to be safe as sorry. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we're back. And as you can see, we've got the sections fitted in front and back. Um, next job is to bring this together and I was planning to film this but I've been trying a bit of test fitting and I'll be quite honest with you uh, it's crap <laughs> that's really the wrong long way about it it is absolutely crap um, it is a better fit now that we've got the um, bulkheads in and we can bring together I figured out if we bring together this middle section first and then work on the cockpit section even once we've got that together that's not too bad we've got a terrible step here and the twail tail is totally twisted you can see that so i think what i'm going to do is put this together off camera because i won't be able to focus on getting the um getting the activity caught on camera um, and getting everything straight but what I'm planning to do is we're going to fix section the top seam we're going to do it bit by bit get it in get it cured let it dry you know strap it up um, tape it up clamp it whatever we need to do to get that section together and then after a couple hours once it's got a good strong bite then we'll move on and do the next section and we'll get the whole top seam done first then we'll turn over the fuselage and we'll focus on getting the uh, bottom together so we'll draw this section to a close um, and 
we'll come back once we've got the fuselage halves together and then we'll look at bringing the wing parts and stuff together. Welcome back. And as you can see, I have managed to fight <laughs> this fuselage into submission, but it's actually after a bit of careful gluing, a bit of time taken, it's actually come together not just too bad. All the joints have closed up, or virtually all the panel lines are married up where they join each other at the join. Obviously, I've still got some of these large uh, sprue points uh, on the fuselage that I'm going to attend to. Uh, the biggest problem was actually on the tail. Get this, it's really awkward. This is the size of this aircraft. So, I don't know if you can actually see that, but the tail is warped the most, and it was slightly uh, here at the trim tab um out misaligned but we'll be able to sort that out with a bit of careful filing and sanding but it's very strong it's very stable and if you look inside we've got a lovely cockpit and the waist gunner's position looks really nice too so um i'm gonna leave that now um probably a couple of days or more to really allow the glue to cure up and harden up and reach its um, final position in regards to shrinkage. Um, if you rush ahead, then you stand the chance of getting ghost seams forming once you've got the paint in, and I really, really want to get a good paint finish on this. Um, so we're going to leave it cure. There is work to do, as well as um, obviously tackling the seams. Because this airframe is be beautifully riveted, um, there are on some of these curved surfaces areas where the rivets have um, softened. So I have um, my Galaxy Tools uh, riveting tool and it's the 0.75 millimeter riveting wheel um, that matches the spacing on these rivets. So we're going to re-rivet some of these areas just to bring it all into um, even context with one another. And there's one or two panel lines that have slightly filled in so obviously the mold is slightly getting a bit of wear um, so we'll take the Tamiya scriber and go over some of those panel lines to make sure that they're all in register and even with one another but all in all it is a beautiful kit I'm really really happy with it and I'm happy that the progress is moving on so whilst that's doing that the next thing we've got to do is look at um, making the wings and the control surfaces so the horizontal stabilizers, um, the wingtip floats, engines, and all the other lovely stuff. And again, it's huge. So in order to speed things up a little, I've taken um, the wings off the um, sprue, cleaned up the sprue attachment points. So we've got two upper outer wing sections. We've got one upper mid wing section, and then we've got two lower wing sections full wing sections so it's actually quite a good um, structured way of building the wing to build strength into it there are strengthening um, pieces in the wing you don't need to drill any holes for the underwing ordnance it's all here um, the aerial attachment points it's looking nice and again as I said on the review these wings are absolutely beautiful bearing in mind this is a 1995 tooling um, it's way ahead of its time um, Ravel monogram at its best as well as that we can look at the upper wing we've got a central point here we need to be careful with this is where a cluster of antenna go in um, but also we want to look at this beautiful fabric texture on the rear of the wing replicating the actual aircraft um, how it was put together so um, yeah it is just for the age of this kit I'm absolutely blown away by the quality of the moulding um, and it's such a shame that this kit is no longer produced by Ravel. Um, it really is. There is a couple of areas, I must say, on the fuselage. We'll show this closer when we go into re-riveting, but I don't know if you can see that with the light reflecting, but this panel here is obviously a takeout panel in the mould, so they can switch between producing the amphibian and the true seaplane, because also you can see on the underside here where the front wheel well is, there's obviously a switch out part of the mold it's not too bad i'll give them that it's not too bad it just needs a little bit of fettling just to blend in 
the height differential in the panels, but all in all, I think it's quite acceptable. Right, so glue in the wing, how are we gonna tackle this? Well, probably pretty much how the instruction says. Upper piece, lower piece. We're gonna use the same as we did on the fuselage. I'm gonna use a combination of the Ravel contactor on all the joints, and then we're gonna wick in some Tamiya extra thin. Now, the locating pins are here, but they're quite fine. So we need to be very, very careful when we come to alignment. Um, and there's nothing that marries up to these strengthening ribs. So we don't have to worry about gluing them, but we can glue all the way around the edge here for the first half of it. So good old Revel contact you. And this should ensure not only do we get um, a constant join, which is what we need on such a large airframe. We need that constant glued surface. So it all bonds together. But using the contact here also gives you that opportunity to get a little bit of glue oozing out of the joint, curing up. And then you shouldn't need to fill too much. Now on these rear trailing edges, we'll run it along the edge and then run it along the inside edge. And then we'll do a simple zigzag pattern. Just to give us maximum glue coverage. Obviously with a zigzag pattern, you leave enough unglued area for the glue to compress into when we squeeze it together. Right, there we go. We only need glue one side. And then being careful how we align the pins and pin mark up. So we get the first one in. Then we get the rearmost one in. And you know when it's in because it all lines up and clicks in place. It's quite a positive fit. And obviously I've gone for the wrong pin, so I'll just pull it apart. Try again. There we go. That's the first pin in. So if we get the leading edge done first. There we go. That's clicked in. Nice positive click. And then we compress the back. There is a bit of flex in the plastic, so it will take a little bit of persuasion just to get those pin marks in. And that if I'm saying one criticism for Ravel, the monogram, they probably could have made them a little bit bigger just to help with that positive fit. But it's together. And being Ravel plastic, it really likes Ravel glue. But what we'll do is we'll just run a little bit of time here, extra thin over all the joints. That'll help. It'll help the... Uh, contact here, bite in to the plastic and give you that really good solid weld joint. And I think what's important with this, because it's such a large wing, we'll get some tape on the front and we'll use some clothes pegs on the rear, <clears throat> but we'll, we'll need to leave the center section for a good hour or two just to fully cure up before we then look to put on the uh, outer portions of the wing and that way we know the core of the wing is solid and it will be able to support the extra weight of the outer wing parts going on. So we've wicked glue in along the back edge, it probably was slightly off camera we want to pinch into the edge. Just being careful not to get glue on your fingers because you don't want to spoil that detail. 
There we go. There's a little bit of glue coming out. You can see that. I've got some there, but that will soon sand away. So you want to pinch down towards the edge. So you're drawing that wing together at the edge. And the other thing I've noticed about this wing is it's beautifully thin on the trailing edge. It really is nice. Really, really nice. Now if you want, what I've seen other people use is, uh, they sometimes PE pliers can be really, really good just for going in there and nipping that edge closed. You get that fine, there we go, see? They're bringing that edge together. Um, what other people can use are um, photographic uh, paper clips for developing old wet film photographs. And they're just like little bulldog clips that will clip onto the trailing edge of the wing. But you just want to see a little bit of glue coming out. Tells you that the wings fully bonded together. Try not to put too much pressure on that you're not doing too much. When we come back in and sand this and flat it back off, that will blend in nicely. So there's still a little bit of a gap there I'm going to work on. But that's how I'm going to tackle this job. And what I'll do is I'll turn the camera off so I can fully focus on it. And then we can come back once we have got it ready to do the outer sections of the wings. So we'll see you in a little while.